Behind an effective irrigation system is an active water users association. In a properly managed irrigation system, water in adequate amounts is delivered in a timely manner to the farmer's fields and this in turn leads to good crop production. If, before the formation of Water Users Association, we did not receive adequate water in a timely manner and much of our crop did not give a good harvest, much of this changed after the association. The association sees to it that we receive the right amount of water at the right time. The Water Users Association is an organization of farmers who come together to manage their irrigation activities. The irrigators can be organized in different ways. These may be organized either formally or informally. The Water Users Association could be traditional organizations or that have been formed through an external assistance. Though the Water Users Association may be organized differently, their overall objective is the same. It is to provide for and meet the irrigation needs of the members so that they get timely and adequate water for agricultural purpose in a sustainable way. The associations have shown positive impacts on irrigation systems performance in many countries and regions. A developing country's economic growth refers primarily to its agricultural growth. First, a high proportion of the country's gross domestic product is from the agriculture sector. Second, a majority of the country's labour force is engaged in agriculture. However, in developing countries, not all land is suitable for agriculture. A substantial portion of the land being mountains, hills, desert or simply barren. Rapid population growth is a common problem in many developing countries. More and more needs to be produced to meet the requirements of a growing population. There are various ways to increase agricultural productivity and thereby to produce enough to meet the requirements of a growing population. Providing timely fertilizers is one. Adequate credit to the farmers to enable them to buy seeds is another. Use of pesticides for reducing crop loss is another. Along with these measures, irrigation water is one of the most important means for increasing productivity. Irrigation helps in increasing agricultural yield in several ways. It does so firstly by increasing the command area or area under reliable irrigation. By bringing fallow land or land that did not receive any water under irrigation, it increases agricultural yields. It does so secondly by intensifying cropping. In an area that had previously only one crop a year, through irrigation facilities, two or even three crops could be grown in a year, thus raising agricultural production. It does so thirdly by increasing actual agricultural yields. If say, before irrigation the yield of paddy is 2 metric tons per hectare, after irrigation this could increase to 3.5 metric tons per hectare. There are broadly speaking two types of irrigation systems based on the type of management. One is the agency managed irrigation system and the other is the farmer-managed irrigation system. While agency-managed irrigation systems are those irrigation systems managed by the concerned departments, such as the Department of Irrigation or the relevant government agencies, the farmer-managed irrigation systems are those systems that are managed by farmers without interference from the state. The presence of water users associations 
in farmer-managed irrigation systems has been identified as the crucial factor leading to more efficient and effective functioning of the irrigation systems as compared to the purely agency-managed irrigation systems. The farmer-managed systems have generally been operating for a longer time than the agency-managed systems. The associations of farmer-managed irrigation systems have most often originated from the internal initiatives of the farmers. Thus, these water associations are based on a strong feeling of ownership. These endeavours have resulted in the recognition that the proper functioning of an irrigation system depends both on the appropriate technology of delivery systems as well as on the role of the water users' associations. There could be different processes leading to the formation of the water users' associations. In farmer-managed irrigation systems, the farmers using the same irrigation come together and form an organization, framing its own laws or adopt local or customary laws to operate the irrigation systems. The laws may be either oral or written. The Water Users Association of Agency Managed or Participatory Irrigation Management Schemes usually have formal written rules for irrigation management. Sometimes an external agency, such as an NGO, may help in construction and the rehabilitation of an irrigation system. In such cases, the agency may help the farmers to form an association and develop its own laws. One such organization in Gujarat is Sadhguru Water and Development Foundation. Another is the Aga Khan Rural Support Programme. Another is Development Support Centre. So generally when we take up a programme, we, we do not ask for any kind of contribution from them. We, the physical implementation of the programme is completely done by the organisation, especially for programmes like water resources development, water harvesting structures and irrigation projects. The rules become the constitution of the association and it operates according to these rules. The agency may provide some amount of financial resources for the rehabilitation works and the remaining amount would be collected from the farmers. The Aga Khan Rural Support Program has provided us support in organizing ourselves for participatory irrigation management. The association comprises of two levels. They are the general and the executive levels. The general body consists of general members, while the executive body is the decision-making body of the association. All the adult farmers having land in the command area that is to be irrigated by the same water source become the general members of the Water Users Association. Among these general members, the executive members are then elected or are selected by the General Assembly based on consensus. The executive members do not get remuneration but do the work voluntarily. The executive committee usually consists of a chairperson, vice-chairperson, secretary, treasurer 
and other executive members. The executive members are usually the ones who have resources and time to pursue community-related works and who are generally literate. The chairperson presides over all the association's meetings. In his or her absence, the vice-chairperson carries out the concerned works. The general meeting of the Water Users Association usually takes place according to its rules and are attended by all the general members. These take place usually before the plantation season. The secretary of the executive committee keeps accounts and the financial records. The secretary is responsible for calling the meeting of the association according to the orders of the chairperson. Sometimes the secretary could be a salaried person. In such a case, the person would not be selected but would be a paid employee. The rest of the executive members also assist in carrying out the duties of the executive committee. Women are substantially involved in agricultural and irrigation works. Gender norms in many countries define irrigation as men's work. The physical works related with irrigation has been the main cause for this. But the reality is different from the stereotype. Women had been involved in some areas of irrigation in the past and are becoming more and more involved at present. As men in the rural areas leave their homes and families in search of economical avenues, the women are left in homes to take care of both the family and the farms. It is we who are involved in irrigation works. The association has recognized this fact by selecting us as members and office bearers in the committee. One reason why AKRSP decided that women, that we also need to ensure that women also play an important role in irrigation management societies. Initially, it was very difficult to convince uh, the societies because uh, irrigation has been a predominantly men's domain. So for men to accept that women would come and uh, also play an, a role in irrigation management was very, very difficult. Men resisted a lot. But later on, when we conducted a lot of exercises in the field, both with men and women together, men realized that no, it was not they themselves who had a right to decide, but women also need to be included. Even though they were involving women as committee members, the actual role of women was being marginalized. Studies have shown that it is a certain category of women that are more involved in irrigation management. It is the women who come from poorer households who are so involved. When rules for water users associations are formulated, it is necessary to consider that this category of women are adequately represented. Women face different types of social, cultural and psychological constraints to participate in community works, so necessary measures should be taken to facilitate their participation. The Water Users Association conducts different primary functions. These relate to water acquisition, water allocation and distributing water, system maintenance, conflict resolution and information dissemination. Water acquisition is the process of acquiring water from the source. Water acquisition involves construction activities. Depending on the water source, the water may be acquired through lift pumps, from the canal or under the ground, or diverted through gravity flow schemes. Mm -hmm. 
water acquisition may also include construction of other sophisticated structures. As there are different construction activities, more men than women take part in water acquisition works. Water allocation means assigning rights to users and determining who shall have access to how much of water. There are different types of water delivery systems. The Water Users Association has rules to distribute water. These may be either according to the crop requirement, per land holding size or relative position of the land to the irrigation canal. Both men and women participate in water distribution activities. Sometimes the association may employ a water watchman to conduct water delivery works. This person may receive a salary for this duty, which would be collected from the beneficiary farmers. There may be different dissensions and conflicts among the farmers. These usually relate to water distribution activities. Water stealing is the most common cause of such conflicts. Another cause of conflict is the insufficient water during plantations. Conflicts may be limited to name-calling or may even result in physical violence. The Water Users Association plays an important role in solving these conflicts. It is according to the rules of the association that these types of conflicts are solved. Depending upon the rules, the guilty may receive a warning, a fine or punishment. A strong Water Users Association sees to it that its rules are complied with. Another important function of the Water Users Association is to mobilise resources for system maintenance. System maintenance is the repairing and cleaning of the canal for regular and efficient water acquisition and distribution. Labour and fees are required for system maintenance and other related activities. The committee lays down the rules regarding household contribution and the fees that are to be contributed by the general members. Maintenance activities usually correspond to the plantation seasons. Maintenance works include works such as removing silt, grass and gravel from the irrigation canal. Information dissemination is another important function of the Executive Committee. The process by which it conveys its rules and information to the general members and tackles the problems of its members are important to the credibility of the committee. The executive members also see to it that their information gets to every member including women. This results in the smooth functioning of the association and even of the irrigation management. Besides these primary functions, the Water Users Association at some places also carries out secondary functions that help members. If the association has built up necessary capacity and resources, then it can diversify its activities, which can be termed as secondary functions. The secondary activities are strengthened if it can receive support from governmental or non-governmental agencies. The role of the Water Users Association can be for supplying inputs, providing credits, farm equipments, marketing of agricultural products, facilitating fishing and grazing and drinking water. Some such examples are the Water Users Association being involved in Milk Cooperative in Gujarat in India and the Agricultural Cooperative in Vietnam. While farmers have traditionally grown cereals like paddy or wheat, some Water Users Associations in India have shifted to cash crops. Some have even realised the importance of floriculture since floriculture yields a higher return and so have begun growing and marketing flowers. Different social and economic factors can lead to better functioning of the water users' associations. These relate to both technological and socio-economic factors. Some of the socio-economic factors are local social organisation, market access, market incentives and financial viability. 
A supportive policy and legal environment is crucial for the sustainability of the water users' associations. An efficient association will result in more effective and reliable irrigation management. The reliable and effective irrigation management will augment farm productivity and farm income and lead towards the empowerment of the farmers. An active water users association in turn results in an active irrigation system. What we are seeing here is what has been become possible because of the irrigation system, the lift irrigation. Now there are multiple benefits of the lift irrigation system. Once you uh, once you start taking crops regularly, you're taking three crops, your economic level goes up, your economic status goes up. And the moment your economic status goes up, that means your children are getting better education, you're getting better health facilities, you're economically also rising in your social status, better housing, better clothing, more facilities, and you're also moving out to look for other opportunities. And in this village itself, earlier, like the, like, at least the tribal children, None of them used to go to school. Today, 100% of the tribal children are going to school. With more income at their disposal, farmers have been able to send their children to school. They have been able to offer to their children a brighter future.